Hey guys, got myself this uh, LCR meter. It's a Dere, Dere, D E R E E. I'm not sure how to say that. Dere LCR meter. Uh, model number D E five thousand, D E dash five thousand. It's a um kind of a common one for like the low end sort of well mid low end uh, LCR meter. L of course is the uh, inductance, C is for capacitance, and R is res resistance. So it's a capacitance. Or inductance, capacitance, resistance meter. Good for uh, tuning coils and uh, capacitors and measuring things. And it does all the like ESR and uh, oh, there's a whole heap of other measurements it does as well to um, characterize all of your inductors, capacitors, and resistors. Now, there's a whole heap of uh, different attachments for this. You can see in the front here, we've got these slots. Uh, you can actually stick your uh, capacitor directly into there, the leads of the capacitor. Um, also, it's got the normal. Uh, Binding post, or the sorry, the banana jacks for your leads, so you can have leads and poke things as you need to. But it also has a whole bit of attachments, like this one here. You see, it's got the uh, the gold there, and um, that just plugs directly in. And you can uh, use the the alligator clips to just clip on your capacitor and uh, test it as you would normally. Um, there's a few other attachments as well. We've got uh, ah, I got two of these actually because I'm going to show you a mod. Um, We've also got a, a guard lead earth cable, so that plugs into the uh, the guard there. If I can get it in, it's a bit tight. So you can clip that on. That's basically like a shield, sort of. Basically, functionally works basically like a shield, shield or a drain wire. Um, we've also got the battery pack. Oh, sorry, battery pack. The battery um, replacement. It's a um, power pack, so you can run off mains. And I've got the uh, SMD tweezers. All of this in a Kihabara cost me a, just under a hundred bucks, um, just under Ichiman yen, which is uh, ten thousand yen, about a hundred bucks. So you got the tweezers there, nice gold plate at the end. It's um, four wire all the way up to right there, so the actual tweezer itself isn't actually four wire um, for the last inch. But it's four wire all the way up to the last inch, um, so it's basically a four wire connection there. Now, the mod that I'm going to show you in this video involves the alligator clips. Now, I want some uh, leads that are a bit longer, um, so I can sit this on my bench, like over here, and have the leads coming somewhere convenient, and I can just test away. But also, I want them to be four wire. Now, this is actually a four wire adapter, and it's four wire right up to the alligator clips about there where the um, the wires solder in but to the end it's not four wire um, it's also kind of short so I want something where it's like I said I can put this out of the way have a big area for um, for working or if I've got my equipment which I'm testing I can bring the leads in and just test as I need to so what I did I went to eBay and you can do the same with your friendly web browser go to eBay and search for uh, Kelvin clips, that's what these are. Kelvin clips BNC, um, something like that. I'll put a link down below as well for the uh, search the search parameters. And uh, you'll get one of these turn up. So this has got the uh, proper Kelvin clips. You can see there, nice gold plated. Um, each one of these is, a, uh, is isolated. It's not like a normal alligator clip where the whole end is the same uh, connection. It's two separate connections there. So it's going to be four wire right to the end. And then it comes to the other end to these BNC plugs. Those BNC plugs, we're going to get rid of. We don't need them. But the reason why we bought it with BNC plugs is because it's the cheapest way to buy this with a uh, coax cable that's um, wired as a four wire. They just they just tag along for the ride for our purposes. So we're going to get rid of those, which is really easy because they just unscrew and you can snip it off and keep those BNC plugs because they're solder to uh, style and um, they could be useful for something in the future. And then we're going to put this into there. So we'll have a look at what's inside here. Two screws underneath to open the box up. Just like that. And that's what we've got inside. Well, let's zoom in and have a bit of a closer look. So that's it there. So you can see there's this, uh, what's that? Vertical board, I always get confused, vertical and horizontal, Hor horizontal, horizon, horizon is that way, so that's horizontal, that's vertical. 
and that comes through to these gold plated tabs at the bottom. You can see you got the two connections there and then up there you got two connections up the top there. So that's our four wire, one, two, three and four and then obviously the shield goes to the guard. So we're going to replicate that but instead of having these we're going to have, will they fit in the frame? These. So all we've got to do is uh, pull this board out. There's four screws. One, two, three, and four. And snip that cable tie. Desolder these and solder in our new ones. So I'll zoom back out and we'll get to it. All right, double-sided board, par for the course, and we want to snip off that cable tie, just like that. So you've got plus one and plus two, minus one and minus two. So the minus one and minus two go to one side, and the plus one and plus two go to the other side. It doesn't really matter which is plus and minus on the... Um, the connector because you can put it that way, you can put it that way, it doesn't matter as long as you got the two negatives or the two minuses go to one connector and the two positives go to the other connector. So get the uh, soldering line warmed up and then we can desolder these. In the meantime, these can be snipped off. Now we carefully strip the coax, give it what, an inch, inch and a half. I'll try and make it, I'll do it 30 mil. That's just over an inch. Just be real careful so I don't slice through the cable. Because we want that shield. The foil, we don't care about. All right, got our wires all stripped and tinned, ready to go. And we just got to pull these out of here. I love having a desoldering gun. It's so good. No solder wick, no solder desoldering pumps, just this awesome gun. So convenient. It's a Hakko FM2024 and it's awesome. Uh. 
All right. There we go. All nice. Once we're done, we'll give it a clean with some iso alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, to make sure it's all clean and flux free. All right. So get the red one. They want to go to one and two plus. I'm going to get this one to hold things steady. Oh, I'll get you back on screen. Positive done. That was a positive? Yes, I got the right way around. Awesome. Wouldn't be the first time I mess it up. Positive here, negative here, and the drain wires. Nice. Next, we need one cable tie, and we can put the cable tie around for the strain relief. No good going to all this trouble. I need to rip the cables out first time you use it. Just like that. Alright, get the old Kim wipes and some isopropyl alcohol from a jam jar. Only the best. What is it? Strawberry jam. Get rid of all that flux. Looking pretty good. And I'll put the lid back on that. Always put the lid back on, otherwise you'll knock it over. Well, I do well anyway. Guaranteed. That should just kind of work into there a bit work it work it and we can screw that down once you put the lid on two more screws and you're done simple as that And that is Kelvin Clips for your DE5000. Boom, like that. I'll grab a ca uh, capacitor. All right, I've got myself a small capacitor here. That is a uh, 8200 microfarad at 450 volt DC. I've got five of the things. What's that? It's 1,620 yen each. Um, probably going to be used for a coil gun or something ridiculous. But I do actually have a small one, 
we'll try both of them because I want to see if it can measure something like that. Okay, this is a brand new meter. And you know what the best thing about a brand new toy is? It's not turning on and having a play with it. It is this. This is the best thing about buying a new toy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love pulling off those plastic covers. Mm -mm. Best thing. All right, let's turn it on. See if I can figure out how to use this thing. Okay, I think that's on capacitance. Uh, LCR, it's got CP. Um, I'm going to make a fool of myself. DCR, L, that's, that's inductance. Capacitance. Okay, yep, this is capacitance. So let's plug this in. Negative on the negative, positive on the positive. And what does it say? Give it a second. 880 microfarad, and this is a 1000 microfarad, so 883. Pretty close, I guess that's at about 20%, so yeah, ish. So that's alright. How about this thing? This stonking great thing. Okay, we go negative and positive. Let's see if we can figure it out. It's going for it. It's going for it. Overload. Bah! Yeah, this thing. What is this? 224J. It's a, a polycap of some description. No, uh, yeah. Film cap, polycap, something or other. Let's see what it says. 221 nanofarad. 224. Oh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty close. 221. Yeah, that's pretty close. Nice. So I'm going to give that two enthusiastic thumbs up. Kelvin clips for your meter. Nice. All right, guys. Well, that's how you do it. All right, all right. I'm going to retest this big one because uh, people are going to scream at me if I don't. So I've got this thing now set to 100 hertz testing frequency. With a large capacitor, you need to uh, test it at a lower frequency um, because large capacitors take longer to charge. And if you try and test it at a high frequency, it doesn't charge up and discharge enough to make any meaningful measurements. So uh, you have to charge it and discharge it at a lower frequency and then you can um, you can get a, a reading. These work by charging and discharging capac the capacitor to, a, to and from a, uh, a known amount and it uh, measures the time and all that sort of stuff and then it can calculate the, uh, the capacitance. So um, we've got that set to 100 hertz, which is a, the lowest frequency this will work at. And uh, that should give us um, a, a more meaningful number than overload at the higher frequencies. Also, um, when you have a brand new capacitor, which this is, uh, very often with the larger ones and the high voltage ones, if you test them brand new out of the pack, they um, you have often get weird readings. Uh, I had to charge this one up and discharge it. I charged up to 425 volts, not the 450 volts, because... Um, that's basically as much as my power supply will go to. But, uh, yeah, I charge up and discharge it so the electrochemistry can do its electrochemical stuff and uh, the um, the plates and stuff inside can form and all that sort of gear. And now we should get a, um, a proper reading. Also, uh, because I've just charged and discharged it, I'm going to have to um, just make sure we've got nothing, uh, no floating voltages, because that will throw off our readings as well. Uh, this was already discharged a couple of times, but because of electrochemistry and stuff, um, it will regain a, a small amount of charge, like a couple of volts or whatever, and that's enough to throw the uh, the meter off. So let's immediately hook that up, negative and positive, and we'll see what we get. Now it's working. 7 millifarad, which is 7,000 microfarad. This is an 8,200. So that's that's reading a number. It's not quite um, the full amount because this has only been charged and discharged once and not to its full uh, voltage. But it's working on the big old fat capacitor. Oh yeah, like two, three kilos worth of capacitor right there. So that's it. That does work. Yeah, you can all <laughs> not yell at me for testing the thing the wrong way. All right, well, that's done. These, uh, these leads work. I'm happy with that, and um, I will definitely be using those 
in the future. Two enthusiastic thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next one.